Badly students, um, I guess uh, Dr. Star, um, Prozmark may have mentioned to me, uh, mentioned to you guys about me. My name is Ashan. I used to be a Bentley graduate back in 2000, I would say 17 to 18, I guess. Yeah. Um, my background is coming from a mainly commercial sector. I used to work at AIG, Deloitte, and EY. And then um, our president at the Corp recruited me to join uh, with his organization. Um, and today we are joining with um, our CEO, uh, Terry Wilson, and our president, um, Gaddafi Ishmael. So I'll share my screen and I'll give you an overview of uh, what Deloon is, what we are doing, and I'll be hand it over to Gaddafi and Terry to give an overview of about themselves and to tell a little bit about Gaddafi, how he started the organization as well. And later on, we uh, will be discussing about how um, the uh, areas of cybersecurity um, are impact to, um, from Dillon Corp to, uh, on cybersecurity as well. And then some emerging technologies in the area of cybersecurity as um, lastly. So we are about to start. Righty. Um, I guess everyone can see my screen. All right. All right. So Dilun Cup we start uh, Gaddafi is my um our president started Dilun Cup in 2016. Uh we are based out of Springfield, Virginia. We have four uh verticals: agri, he energy, health, and technology. We are 100 percent a federal contractor. So you guys probably have heard about Lidos, uh GDIT, Raytheon in Voltam. And like those big uh, big organizations, we are also in the federal contracting, but as a small business. Um, on your left hand side, you see the uh, all of our certifications that we um, we are a eight a that is a in the government contracting world, it's called a contracting vehicle, and also we are a GSA contractor as well. And apart from that, we are a uh, we have all three ISO certifications, and we are minority-owned business as well. On the top uh, right-hand corner, you see our year-to-year -year growth uh, since the time that we started, and we have not yet projected the to the um, have not updated for 2022 and 2023, but we are about um, I would say around um, am my correct graph if I say about um, 90 to 100 million. Uh, historic sales, yeah. Historic sales, yes. So on the, let me put it here. This screen, we uh, uh, demonstrate about the uh, all the contracts we have done. Altogether, we have done about uh, 200 prime, prime contracts. So in the federal world, prime contract means um, as a main large uh, as a main large business, we're doing the entire project. Then we have something called sole source. We have um, we are working with four agencies. We have nine business awards, and we again we are on a contract called eight A. Um, um, we are expiring that on 2023, 2030. Sorry, uh, we do have a global presence. We are working on um, serving about eleven countries on two different industries, and we have about forty clients uh, around the globe as well. Uh, we do have achieved. Um, um, some of the awards, as uh, mentioned here, um, we have placed 977 on Inc. Magazine, which is a large um, event for us. Uh, we are on the um, Moxie finalist this year as well. We have placed um, 27th on Wall, uh, uh, Wall Street Business Journal, and we are on Mount Lennon, um, Mount Lennon Lee Chamber of Commerce Business Year of, uh, in 2019. Um, so I will hand it over to Gaddafi and Terry to give a small overview of them and how Gaddafi started the business and Terry's background on working in the federal space. Over to you, Gaddafi. Terry, you can go now. I'll bring it home. No problem. Uh, hello, everyone. Thanks for uh, thanks for having us on today. Um, you know, there's a lot to talk about in the cybersecurity realm. Uh, uh, Sean mentioned that he really, uh, you know, he, he he finalized his education what six eight years ago uh, in the cyberspace. Um, I myself retired out of the Air Force uh, after 21 years, 
in 2005. And even at that time, cybersecurity and, and, and the, the notion of cyber was relatively new. It was still centered around really physical security, right? How do we lock down uh, systems and data? Um, but if you think about it, and I, it's my understanding, everybody here has been into uh, the intro course, so you have an understanding of what cyber is and why we have it. But in the federal space specifically, I can say that it is really linked to the information, right? The chief information officer, the top guy in charge of each agency is responsible for securing that data, right? So they come up with policies and procedures to do that. The challenge is keeping the data secure while still having access to it because the information has to be utilized by the government and its and its customers. So uh, information security grew into cyber over the last really 10, 15 years and is evolving constantly. Um, I know in the in, in the national sector, you're probably looking at uh, something on the order of, I don't know, I, th I want to say it's about a half a million openings in what are what are called cyber positions right now across the nation, which equates to about 30 percent of the total uh, demographic. But if you were to narrow that down to the federal space, it's less than 10,000 openings. And the reason that that's narrowed so far is in the federal space specifically. Um, there's a higher level of certification, generally speaking, uh, associated with continuous education, as well as demonstrable experience. That means you have to have hands-on experience for certain positions. And then to top it all off, a security clearance, which uh, can be quite arduous to attain and a challenge to maintain, depending on your lifestyle, quite frankly. So in the federal space, it's a smaller number but I will say this about the federal space and cybersecurity, the evolution and your opportunity to grow uh, in, a, in a career path, I think is greater than in the commercial space. And the reason I say that is if you get on board with, with a contractor like ours or another in, in, in a mid-level or even a junior cybersecurity position, you have the opportunity to get exposed to continuing education, uh, customer-supported certifications, um, and the ability to cross function and cross uh, utilize, you know, your talent on a given contract for a given customer, which you may not be able to do in the commercial space, right? That's a little bit harder to do in some circumstances. Um, and once you have that certification, once you have that clearance, uh, that, that demonstrated uh, uh, experience, uh, the opportunity will always be there. Right. Uh, that that is a finite number of folks that are in there and that is limited by those by those uh, requirements that I just named off. So um, if you want to talk further about the federal space, that's kind of my sweet spot. I'd happily chat with any about anyone about that. And certainly if you got any questions, I think we'll take those to the end. But uh, happy to chat further. Uh, uh, Sean, that's all I got. Thank you, Terry. Can I would you like to speak or shall we wait a little bit? So I'll give you a basic idea about myself. Um, as mentioned, I mainly uh, pivoted towards the federal sector when Gaddafi recruited me. I um, coming from the commercial sector as an incident response uh, and digital forensics person working at Deloitte. Um, what I did mainly is think about incident response. Um, think about it in an area like um, if a fire has happened, you call the people to uh, fire hazard people to uh, calm down the fire or in, in an emergency. So that's when we um, start um, getting to action. I primarily worked on the malware analysis side um, and also in the investigation side. Um, tools that people use basically on those areas are um, NCASE, FTK, um, and then um, other tools, massive large tools as Blakasoft, Aurels, Axiom, and Celebrite. Um, what I did mainly is that if the, on the engineering side, on the analysis side, we cover, get all these evidence and we put it into, uh, get, we, how we're gathering evidence is that if an iPhone or a um, device is there um, given to us, we lock it down completely, meaning that a, we don't let um, Wi-Fi or Bluetooth or any other signals comes into the device because then the ten, um, evidence can be tempted. So that's one area uh, we do. Uh, we completely lock down, and then we start getting the evidence. And then we start uh, analyzing the evidence. 
understanding what has been deleted is that it has uh, whether the data has been um, um, completely tampered or else are there any evidence of using tools like uh, C cleaners um, to tamper the data or else delete the registry. So those are the um, um, areas of expertise I bring into table. And right now I am on more of a program management side with, uh, when it comes to Deloon. What I do is we analyze large bits coming out from the um, 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 federal sector. And then we come up with proposals to write uh, proposals and then come up with a solution to that proposal saying that this is how a Deloon cook will uh, solve your X, Y, and Z problem. And then the other areas such as uh, we manage the entire project. Uh, we build the teams based on the experience as uh, Terry mentioned. We build a good team to show the government that, hey, um, this is the team we have built up to solve your problems. Um, uh, we are mainly working, um, Dillon Cope, we are mainly working with USDA and USAID. Um, and then the, over there, we do into the areas of um, uh, um, deployments and integration and deployments. And our sweet spot is uh, the area of sub supply chain security and into the um, um, other cloud uh, security as well. Um, so uh, what else we do? So I think when it comes to cyber, uh, common expertise is that common idea is that people think about Google, Facebook, um, other large entities, AT&T or T-Mobile as the cyber. But I think when our, our expertise, my expertise when it comes to um, my witness is that cyber is also in the humanitarian missions. Cyber is also into the areas of agriculture. Cyber is also into the, in, into the areas of small business. And a unique area that we have seen working with USAID is that um, we have seen uh, investing uh, into building other uh, countries, their cyber capabilities, such as there are projects in Kosovo building um, infrastructures. There are cyber infrastructures. There are projects in Bangladesh securing their applications. Deloon, we did a few of them. And there are um, areas in Jamaica, USAID is investing heavily into building cyber infrastructure. So that's where the cyber lives, not just in the entities of Apple, Google, or uh, large businesses, but also in human emissions. Um, USDA uh, is working on completely revamping their uh, infrastructure, cloud, migrating to cloud and uh, rural developments they are doing into cyber. So those are the areas that um, we uh, have seen on the federal sector and doing. And there are missions with Raytheon actually doing larger um, 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 in, uh, investigations or as um, mainly research and development area that cyber is um, involving, such as how um, the uh, missile jamming systems can be working. Um, yeah. Gaddafi, are you there? Would you I'm like here. to? Yeah. So over to you, um, they would <laughs> like to know a bit more about your side and how you uh, started the business and all as well. They are, I think, mainly business students as well. Well, um, um, thank you for organizing this, Ashan and um, uh, Bentley students. Um, uh, thank you for tuning in today on a Friday afternoon. Uh, so uh, we are a small business, as Ashan said, and uh, more than 60 million Americans work for small businesses. So. So we are a live wire when it comes to uh, the economy. Without small businesses, there won't small businesses create jobs, the majority of the jobs. So as students, uh, I would like to share that, and that is important. So, I mean, this reminds me of my university days uh, when I was in university. I mean, if I if I put you in, if I come into your uh, age bracket and think of what I was doing at that time, those are exciting times, right? You you have your hard tasks, um, uh, deadlines, your laundry, you know, uh, everything has to be done at a certain time. If not, if you miss that, you know, I was working while I was in university, exciting times. So, but this brings you to, uh, I mean, what do you want to do after you graduate from university? So not many students know what they want to do, right? So, uh, and, and I'm not surprised by it because the world has a lot to offer. But what I want you guys to know is that, uh, it's uh, it's good to try, and and then when you fail, you try another thing. Don't be uh, you know don't don't get knocked down by it. So so when we started Deloon, uh, we started small and we have grown uh, organically. The first year is the toughest, uh, and we are very close to Texas. You guys being in Texas at Bentley, uh, we still do work in Texas. So we started as an a U.S. ag exporting company, 
and we were shipping U.S. ag. Uh, you know, Texas is famous for its corn, its sorghum, its hard red winter wheat. So we buy from farmers in Texas and we stuff it into containers in Houston and we ship it to all around the world. So it was in 2018, we started our IT vertical. Uh, we went into energy and health. That's how we organically grew the company to where we are at the moment. I mean, we are, we are a small business uh, with close to $100 million of historic sales. And we are eager to work with Bentley University because we don't know... Uh, what's in store for us. There could be opportunities where we may need your help, where we may come and offer uh, potential jobs uh, when we have opportunities with the federal government. So these are all things that Delun can bring to the uh, uh, Bentley relationship. And we want to see how we can uh, be a mentor to you. If you need anything, any career advice, I would like to keep those channels open. Uh, uh, along with Terry and Ashan, we should be able to give you some, some sound advice. So, so that is us. And, uh, uh, and I wish you uh, all the best in your career endeavors and uh, choose wisely. And once you have chosen, give it all. Thank you, Ashan. Thank you, Rafi. So uh, thank you for um, everything, Rafi. And uh, let's discuss about cyber. Um, as mentioned, you know, I think a lot of people know about cyber, the areas, um, current areas, um, mainly working in the financial sector and all. But as our experience, the loan experience, I think there's four verticals, four sectors that actually will completely um, cha um, change the entire cybersecurity um, landscape. Um, I think the first one is manufacturing, agriculture sector, uh, critical infrastructure, and healthcare sector. Manufacturing is with the in, uh, industry 4.0. I think manufacturing will uh, be a large scale of um, working machine with the humans. And when it comes to that, we think about how um, machines can be uh, disrupted, such as robotics machines, how the signals, um, the, the Bluetooth, how the uh, Wi-Fi connected devices can be um, integrated. Those machines can be jammed. Um, agriculture sector, information about working, we'll share our experience on that side, um, but information sharing, such as um, working with the farmers, for, um, working with the uh, middlemen and working with the um, supply chain, that can be disrupted. Healthcare is a big area. Um, devices, um, robotics are moving in there and the how the data can be stored. Are there HIPAA compliance or are, are there any other um, compliance that needs to be uh, uh, connected because we are dealing with human data now. And critical infrastructure, transportation, um, chemical industry, oil and gas, green energy. Um, those are the livelihoods in the entire um, countries. If those are jammed, nothing can be working. So it's not in the banking, financial, or big tech, but these are the areas that we think um, entire uh, world cybersecurity can be changed. Military, and um, um, Terry, would you like to add something there? And uh, Gaddafi, uh, yeah. yeah, we can we can talk about that. I mean, uh, right now in the, in, the, in the DOD specifically, when you're talking about the military, uh, uh, each of the militaries have started their own cyber command and the notion of cyber compliance. I mean, as Sean spoke about the industry, the banking industry and the health industry, that that's where cyber came from. It came from a level of compliance. What is our standard? What are we shooting for to protect this information? And I believe the, uh, the, the, the DOD kind of led the U S government when it came to that standardization, as well as the banking industry, huge in there. Um, you know, when, when, when you look at cyber, from a purely business perspective, Sean and I were just talking about this today, um, you, you can easily look back and say, okay, we each of, of these businesses also has a client list and client data and, and vendor data and all these other uh, uh, data points that need to be protected. And there's a level of, of uh, protection that your clients are going to expect. Um, so having a, a policy, a plan, a mechanism in place, and maybe services in place to do that is necessary. And, and just like any other element of business, 
there's a risk vulnerability assessment uh, to be made, right? Uh, so I, I, I think cyber as, as a concept can apply no matter where you, where you eventually land. I think Garafi can mention the horror stories on the supply chain side, working with the USDA when the attack can ha attack happened the on uh, food banks. Garafi, would you like to elaborate on that a little bit? So, um, on I'll mention about the Deloons impact on the agri agriculture side because we are very close on that, and a little bit on the how we did the analysis on their. Um, uh, uh, on the applications. And on the critical infrastructure where we have seen things a little bit, if I'm touching base on that, USAID is doing massive uh, amount of restructuring. Um, how the, uh, the uh, country's critical infrastructure should be secured. And this is where they put out large amount of bids to work with uh, uh, small companies like ourselves to enhance their securities. So on those, um, um, there was a project going on, on going happening in right now in Kayakum region in Jamaica and um, the other um, um, Caribbean islands, completely revamping their infrastructure on a uh, critical side, such as the power grids, how they should have uh, work on transportation sector, how it should be happening. And these are the ways cyber is actually impacting, changing the, uh, the world. And when it comes to transportation sector, think about it, automation. And now driverless cars, if these driverless cars can be hacked, people are from bad attackers, there's human lives involved in it. So those are where people actually, um, cyber analysts, um, data analysts, working together to come up with algorithms to secure these um, um, robotics machines now. Um, there are frameworks that I've referred in here. CISA put out a critical infrastructure framework and um, that we refer sometimes when developing the uh, these kind of uh, methodologies and policies. And um, um, as I mentioned, uh, coming back to our topic on the agri, uh, our, um, our work on agri side. So use case was USAID task the loon with securing one of the applications. Um, this application is actually uh, going to be in Zambia and Bangladesh. They, they're working with farmers, gathering all of their ha uh, harvest data. And the farmers has access to um, the their country agriculture agriculture department, working with the their departments to analyze these um, the harvesting data, uh, uh, vegetables and all. So Dilun Cope was tasked to secure that application. This is on a mobile device, and also some of them are on desktop, desktop applications. So how we uh, tackle down this? Um, this is in the quote unquote um, security world is called a gray box uh, testing, which means we only know a little bit about the uh, application. We cannot speak to the developers um, unless one stage is completed. So um, our task is, to identify the vulnerabilities from an outside perspective, can we break into this uh, application? Um, the application was given and, oh, sorry, we analyzed the application. So what we did was we planted the application on one of the devices, um, and then we put a proxy where uh, we have the access to the network channels. So once the data is, um, transmitting, which means I'm using the application at the um, they develop, and I have the access to the proxy server. So all the data is transferring through this application is now visible to us. This is not a penetration testing because we did not we are not breaking into the application, but we are just analyzing the network data now. Um, once you get the uh, network traffic, we can understand the all the IP addresses where the data is stored in the application um, and where the um, application, uh, is the application passwords are secured? Can I see them? A, number one, can I see the application password on plain text? Is the channels uh, encrypted? Meaning that if I'm uploading a um, image, is, that image has to be encrypted. Is it encrypted or not? And then now this um, is, part of the application, modern the applications are hosted on somewhere on an AWS or a on a my um, Azure services. Now we with the, that IP address, we can trace back to the entire cloud services as well. So that was 
a part of the application uh, uh, testing we did. We were able to harvest the application data. We were able to uh, figure out whether the um, 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 passwords are secure. We were able to figure out whether the channels are encrypted and to point, pinpoint A1 where the, uh, the application SQL database is as well. That just placing the proxy server and uh, uh, navigating the network channels. Second part of it is that now that part, uh, uh, that analysis is completed. Second part of it is that we are completely analyzing the source code of the application. That is done by another uh, few other tools with our developers and uh, going through the line by line, understanding their uh, whether they um, uh, the buffer overflow um, whether it's vulnerable for buffer overflow attacks, whether the uh, new uh, updates on the Java uh, is there, whether the uh, application Redux is there. So those are the things that we have done on Agri side. And, uh, and think about it, just one uh, small project and think about all the other agriculture projects that's happening in the world, moving towards it, the IoT side and moving towards the new um, age of working with iPads, putting applications there and the agriculture uh, farmers working on the, uh, with, the, um, with the agriculture departments to uh, get more um, technically enhanced agriculture sectors. So those are examples we're thinking that we are seeing and how the revolution can happen on cybersecurity. Um, Terry, anything to add to that? Yeah, I would say that uh, you know, for me specifically, this is a this is a transition of cybersecurity because everything I kind of talked about before, when we're talking about agencies protecting their information, even industries protecting their information, is inside their network, right? It's firewall in. Um, uh, you know, it's it's you walk in the bank door, it's tight. What Ashan is talking about here is outside the firewall. It is the network, the web of, of supporting actors and vendors that support this agriculture industry. And this is kind of a new approach to cybersecurity, which, uh, yeah, going back to IoT, it makes it a huge uh, uh, net that we need to cast to help secure the information and the systems and, and the missions of these particular uh, vendors. So it, this is really interesting to me, uh, something that uh, I'm very proud to be part of. Thanks, Sean. Um, lastly, uh, we have about 10 more minutes. So lastly, I want to mention about how the loons see the cyber future. And I think um, to ask for Terry's um, comments, I think there's two areas cyber will actually revol revolutionize things. One is the supply chain cybersecurity, where now there are people from inside the uh, organization securing the actual infrastructure, but some of the largest attacks that is happening in the world are through supply chain. For example, the uh, SolarWinds attack through supply chain, software supply chain security. We are thinking about third-party risk assessment, which, which means that we are analyzing the vendors, how their security posture compared to our clients. Uh, we are thinking about the uh, ransomware accessibility, which means that is the vendor ever happened on the, uh, which means that the vendors have they secured their application, like um, are their applications are up to date, are they using any outdated softwares, um, or as have they had any attacks back in the um, on the um, back in the day, and then a very unique area is that we seen even the government is trying to move now is AI security. Um, how we envision AI security is that there are the traditional AI and the generative AI. Generative AI, AI is you generating new content all the time. And the, that's where the, all the new chips even coming in. Um, and a computer vision is a part of it. And then there's the old um, traditional AI, which means developing through the algorithms. AI thinking about AI working towards the algorithm wherever the limits are. So how do you secure something like that? Um, this is a bit philosophical and a bit um, theoretical at the moment, but what we are testing is that the old ways of um, how um, antivirus systems or intrusion detection system work, signature-based or else in the um, behavioral base. So all these AI working is data, the modern day, um, infrastructures are built on data that is the fuel for large organized i mean for large data sets they has to be tagged 
So how we approaching this is building up something like a um, firewall that is uh, monitoring and uh, monitoring or as telling um, set of uh, put in set of rules. We call we had to call it as uh, policies to monitor the AI. So that's how we approaching it, and I think those are the two areas that AI security is um, may uh, those two areas supply chain security and AI security can revolutionize the areas of um, cyber.